Hello, welcome to day two, part two of uh, applying sinusoidal functions. Today we're going to take a look at one, uh, we're going to finish up one more example, and it's kind of a nice, neat example talking about astronomy, astronomy and everything. It's a kind of real world example, and it's talking about solar flares or sunspots. Now they occur on the surface of the sun. They do occur periodically, and we see that kind of word here. It's kind of like sinusoidal. It's going to repeat over and over again after a certain period of time. And the minimum number of sunspots is about 10 per year to a maximum of about 110 per year. Now, um, between 19, uh, 1750 and 1948, we're told that there were 18 completed maximum or cycles. So what we want to do is we want to get the period of the sunspot cycle. So since there were 18 maximums between 1750 and 1948, we can use that to get our period. We just subtract 1948, subtract 1750, and we divide that by 18. Now, when we divide all this, what we're going to wind up with is 198 over 18, and that's going to give us 11. There were 11 completed cycles, and therefore, that's our period. Okay? Now, what we want to do next is we're going to graph it. So we want to graph it starting in 1948. So in 1948, you can start it right here, 1948. This will be kind of nice. We're going to let our y-axis be 1948 because that's where we're starting. You can put 1948 somewhere else out here, and it'll be okay as well. It's just going to change your c value. But, I, but by putting it here, it's going to make our c value zero. Now, the maximum that we occurred in 1948 was 110. Now, since we know it repeats itself every 11 years, whoops, this should be 11 years, not cycles. How awful is that? So every 11 years, the next one occurred in, maximum occurred in the year 1959. The next maximum after that, 1970. I'm doing two because they say do, sketch two, complete sunspot cycles. Now, my maximum was 110. Well, we're going to need a minimum, too. So where does the minimum occur? At 10. And that's going to occur somewhere in between here. So it looks like right here. And if we graph this, sketch it, you get the world-famous world Warnow function again. So graphing is pretty easy. And remember, we're going to use our graph to actually get our equation. So it says sinusoidal because it says it's periodic. So that means we're going to use our cosine, y equals a, cosine b, t, let's use t for time, because that sounds kind of cool, minus c plus d. So we have to find a, b, c, and d. We'll pause. All right, so please move your car. All right, so to solve this one now, we need to get D. Remember, D is our midline. So if I draw my line right here, that's my midline. Okay, so we don't have a midline crisis. So our midline, D, and it's going to be in the middle. Well, there's 100 units a piece between them, or 50, right? So if I go 50 above 60, I'm sorry, 50 above 10, that's going to put me at 60. And so our C value, or D value, sorry, is 60, our midline. A is the amplitude, the distance from the peak to the amplitude, to the midline. And that is 50. Remember, that's our amplitude. To get B and C, we'll take a look at those. Now, C is going to be easy. We're going to measure from the y-axis to the nearest peak. Oh, look, we're already at the nearest peak. Now, you could use 1959. And you can make your C 1959. But, you know, keep it kind of interesting, uh, easier for yourself. Just let, since we let 1948 be our peak at the y-axis, C is going to be zero. Makes it a little bit easier. To get B, that's our period. That's 2 pi over B. We know our period, remember, was 11 years. So it's 11 equals 2 pi over B. And solving it, you get 11B equals 2 pi, cross multiply, b is 2 pi over 11. And there's your period. So our equation, 
y equals 50 cosine of b, which we just said was 2 pi over 11. Oops, should put it over here. 2 pi over 11. We'd like to see your work. Times t minus 0. You don't have to put the 0 there if you don't want to. Matter of fact, when we graph it later on, we won't. Plus 60. And there's your equation. And this is the equation scientists can use to actually get the cycle of sunspots. I also predict the number of sunspots, which we're going to do right now. Now, this is a very old equation. A uh, question, as you can tell, because we're talking about the year 2000. It says, what is the first year after 2000 in which the number of sunspots is about 35? So to solve this one, we're going to take our equation, our y equation, y of t, and we want to find out when that's going to equal 35. So on our calculator, we are going to graph it, okay? So let's take our calculators out and graph this one. If I type in my equation, we get y equals 50 cosine of 2 pi divided by 11. Remember, we're going to need two, we'll need two sets of parentheses up here, okay? x, we don't need to put the minus 0. You can if you want to. There's no problem with it. Close double sets of parentheses, plus 60. Now, when I change my window, remember, we look at my graph up here. Hit enter. When I go to my window, I'm starting at 1948. So guess where I'm going to start on my window? 1948. My x max? I'm maxing out 1970, but we're asking for 2000. So we might need to go a little bit further than that. Let's go back to year 2005. All right. Remember those days. Remember when math was fun, right? Y minimum? My minimum is 10. My maximum is 110. And I'm going to graph it. There's our function. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Now, we're looking for the intersection. So this is my y1. I'm going to plug that into my y2. I want to find out when this function equals 35. So I go to my y2, type in 35, and I graph it. And there it is. Now, it covers quite a bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So between 1948 and 2005, it's going to, eat, it's going to be 35 10 times. We want to find the first one after the year 2000. So go second calc, intersect. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Now, if you notice down here, it's telling my x value is 1976. So I'm going to scroll over. Scroll, 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 scroll. Keep scrolling. 1984, 1993, when I graduated high school. 97, I graduated college. And, huh, what happened? Not enough space. There's not enough space there. So what do we have to do? Change our window. We have to go past 2005. Let's go to 2010 and then graph it. So sometimes we have to change our window if it doesn't fit. And that's not bad. It just means change a window, and you can take a break for a second. There it is. So I'm looking for that intersection again. Get as close to 2000 as I can. 1979. There's 1979. 1993. Look at this. Ah, and here it occurs. A little bit past 2005. I hit enter, and I get 2005. 0.66666. So we can say it occur the first time it will occur is in the year 2005. Now, the next one says, when will it be a maximum? Now, this is a little bit tougher to do. So to get the maximum value after year 2000, it looks like it might occur right here. Okay? I am going to have to use my second calc, and I'm going to use this second calc maximum because if I want to find a maximum a maximum will do it now it says left bound right bound so I'm gonna scroll see there's 1998 so my maximum occurs right up here so I'm right here at 1999 so I know it's gonna to be to the left of here so left bound is enter if I scroll over a little bit more whoops I'm looks like I'm at the peak not there just hit enter now I'm to the right of my peak, okay? So, and I'm going to hit enter again. Hit us at 2004. 
I hit enter one more time, guess, and it gives me the year 2002. So the maximum occur, the next maximum will occur in the year 2002. Now, just out of curi just out of curiosity, you guys might have heard in the news recently that the solar flares are at a maximum again. Oh yeah, 11 years later, 2013. Anyways, if you have any questions, cut write them down and ask uh, either myself or Miss Noonan tomorrow. We would love to help you. Thank you.